Lord God the Father, I just thank you for this time and this fellowship. And Lord, at time amongst friends, I just lift up our dear friends in the Lord. As a wife and a mother that's going home to be with you, Lord. Amen. From sorrows and troubles, Lord. Comfort that family. Lord God, help us. For the Bible says where two or three are gathered together, Lord, and here you are. Lord, let me not speak ill. Let me not speak wrong. Let me not be in sin of teaching the scriptures, Lord. But let it be the Holy Spirit, Lord. My sins, Lord God, I place under the blood of Jesus Christ that will not interfere with these messages, Lord. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, John chapter 1. Let's do there. Mm -hmm. Be there. <laughs> but John chapter 1. And we've been stuck on verse 12 because it deals with Christianity in a whole. I, I mean, I know a, a preacher. Uh, I've heard of him. Reliable uh, resort. Uh, he's, he's, I forget what chapter, but he took one chapter of the Bible and he preached his whole life on it. It was just so much filled with information. And there are other accounts like Bible books. I mean, it just takes months and months and months. And I'm not in a rush. I want us to see the doctrines and know that we can grow from the scriptures. So first John, I mean, I always say first John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We dealt with receiving. We dealt with the power of God. We dealt that we are the sons of God. I mean, we're just not the creation. We are children of God through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we're going to look at the, the family of God is we are the sons of God. We looked at that. We are the sons. We are the sons in laws of God. I mean, we're going to be the bride of Christ one day. We belong to Jesus. We are His bride, and we are alive. Though this body may die, we are absent from the body and present with love. There actually really is no death, as far as your soul. Your body may pass out, but your soul lives on, either going to heaven or to hell. So, we're going to look at now, believe. It says, them that believe. And if you want to go to a store, a hobby store, a Christian store, you will see all over the place plaques, believe, 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 believe. What is belief? I mean, you can walk up to the counter and say, well, I believe I'll have a hamburger and fries. That ain't going to get you to heaven. And there will be many people when you're dealing with the public ministry, well, I believe. And when you pin them down, it's not what they're supposed to believe. So Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now look at the belief here. You've got to have a mouth confession. But that's not it. You've got to have a heart. Your heart has to be in your belief. And what is one that believes that Jesus Christ came out of that grave three days and three nights by the power of God? And when we talk about salvation, when the person deals with a person about his soul, do they talk about the resurrection? Because that is essential to be saved. Mouth means you're going to speak about Christ somewhere along the line. You can't but shut up about Christ. People come up to me and say, why do you do it? Why do you preach it? Why do you do it? Because my mouth can't shut up with the praises and glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you talk to people and you're talking about Jesus, there's your mouth. There's your mouth confessing the Lord Jesus. I am saved. I am a Christian. I can't shut up. You're not going to shut me up. And there have been great testimony of Christians who have gone to prison because of the Word of God. And they still hadn't shut up. 
John Bunyan, the writer of, of Pilgrim's Progress, would preach in the prison. Um, what's the other one there? Uh, Torture for Christ. I can't think of his name right now. Richard. Richard Rumbar would talk and preach, not with his mouth in prison. They do it by a tapping because they were unable to talk. Morse code type of thing. I was still consider that with the mouth. And then you've got to have your heart in it. Salvation and being a Christian is not head. Psychiatry ain't going to help you because it deals with your head. It don't deal with your heart. Only God can change. A drunk can get in his mind, okay, I'm an alcoholic, but when he puts that heart into it and says, Lord, it's wrong, it's a sin, then he can begin to work. So it's the heart and the resurrection of the gospel. Romans 10, 11. Same chapter, verse 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be a chain. You've got to have an open Bible when you deal with someone's soul. Now I know plenty of times there was no Bible. He said, well, what about, you know, I had a gospel track. That's got scripture in it. I'm talking about, let's go to this movie. Let's go to this, this event where there is no Bible, no scripture, even perverted Bible and scripture. You've got to have your mouth, you've got to have your heart, the resurrection, and you've got to have your belief in the scripture. And you can't be ashamed. There is no ashamed. There is something about that mouth that just wants to speak about God once you receive God. Verse 14, same chapter. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom in him, that's Jesus, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Salvation needs a preacher. You mean that guy that stands behind the pulpit? No, Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And that is applicable for women, too, because you're talking about the Lord. You're not standing up a serpent authority over men. You're telling a person one-on-one -on -one about Christ. The Bible commands it. Romans 10 speaks about it. That lost person is not going to know unless you tell them. They can't believe on Jesus if you have not told them about Jesus and how they believe on Jesus and what the gospel is. Now, what is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 3. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. Now, my problem, I always get 1 and 2 Corinthians all messed up. A lot of times I say 1 Corinthians is actually 2 Corinthians, and 2 Corinthians is actually 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. But 1 Corinthians 15, 3, written to Christians, a testimony of a Christian, Two Christians that Paul witnessed to. And we talked about in Romans the resurrection. That is a need for salvation. Well, the gospel, there are three parts to that. And all three have got to be understood. Okay, yeah, we got the little baby in a manger. Okay, that's nice, cuddly, fun, cute, you know. But that's not salvation. Mm -mm. that's prophecy the Bible says Jesus would be born of a virgin that's fulfilled in prophecy mm -hmm. but that's not what caused us yeah. from everybody from the birth of Jesus to the death of Jesus we're under the law still our salvation is the result after the death, burial, and resurrection so 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. So this is Paul saying, hey, this is what I received. This is what I preached to you. How that Christ died for our sins. Okay, he died. We all die, don't we? Here's the important factor. According to the scriptures. The death, well actually the birth and the life and the death of Jesus Christ was according to the prophecies, according to the scriptures. And those were fulfilled 100%. Now, the scripture that we have, 
My death, if I were to die, you could say Stiley died by Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. But that doesn't pass on to Jesus Christ because he was sinless. So Christ, who is God, and God, who is Jesus Christ, had to die, had to give his life. According with the scriptures, and he kept telling the disciples, "We're going to go to Jerusalem. They're going to they're going to abuse me. They're going to whip me. They're going to they're going to torture me, and then they're going to put me on that cross. They're going to nail me to that cross, and that's fulfilled." So the first part of your belief: Do you believe? Okay, let's look at the part. Do you believe that Jesus Christ was virgin born? Amen. If you don't, you're not saved. And with the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, that had to be a miracle act of God, so he had to be God. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God? Yes. All right, that's salvation. There are many who do not. All right, now when we get the first part of the gospel, do you believe that Jesus Christ died? Oh, yeah, our church celebrated. We have Easter egg hunts and all that. That's not scripture. What do you call the death of Christ? Good Friday. That's not scripture. You say, how do you say that? Doesn't, didn't Jesus say three days and three nights that Jonah was in, in the whale's belly? I shall be three days and three nights in the heart of the belly. All right, let's count. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's not three days and three nights. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. No, Sunday night, he was already resurrected. The Bible says the first day of the week in the morning. You can't have a good Friday. That's anti-scripture. The Bible says that he died over in the Passover. The Bible speaks about John. Um, it was uh, an extra Sabbath. An extra, I forget how the word the wording is. It was a special. Special, yeah. It wasn't the normal. Sabbath. It wasn't the normal uh, Sabbath. And we're not when we're looking at the Sabbath of Jesus' death. It wasn't the Saturday. It was the Passover. He was to be the Passover lamb. He was to die on the fourteenth day of Abraham. When Israel came out, when they slaughtered those lambs and put the blood over the doorpost. And when you look at somebody and say, well, what are you talking about? You need to deal with your soul because Christ's death had nothing to do with, with Good Friday, eating fish or not eating fish. Christ was the Passover lamb and John the Baptist said, behold the lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. What is that lamb? That's the Passover lamb. All right, so... God had to die, according to the scriptures. That's the first part of the gospel, he said. And that he was buried. Well, of course you're going to bury a dead body. You don't want it hanging around. So they buried Jesus in the tomb. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ was prophesied, it was foretold, and it happened exactly as it was to be. Again, now let's deal with people, let's look at their religions and say, all right, do you believe that Jesus died? Yeah, I died. Yes, he died. Okay. Good Friday, whatever they believe. Do you believe that they put him in a tomb? Yes, they put him in a tomb. Do you believe that he came out of that tomb three days and three nights? Well, yeah. What do you call that? Easter. Wrong. We call it Resurrection Sunday. Okay, that, 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 you can do that, but the Bible doesn't give it no. The Bible calls it the gospel. And that the fact is, what we are to believe to be saved is, Jesus Christ is God. He's the virgin birth. He died on that cross according to what the Bible said and what he said. They buried him. They put a seal on that tomb. Because they would believe that the disciples were going to come and steal his body. So... The entire three days and three nights you had a guard standing outside of that tomb, guarding that t tomb, that nobody could go on in there. Alright? So there's no lies. And when you come to the end of John, it, well, we'll pay you this money if you tell this lie. Mm. Okay? And then the first day of the week, we hear that he came out. And, and look at the next verse, which is not part of the gospel, but look, verse 5. And he was seen of Cephas, that's Peter, then of the twelve, and that he was seen above five hundred brethren at once. Over five hundred and twelve people saw that resurrected Jesus Christ. That's the testimony. So, 
do we believe on the resurrected Christ by faith? And the fact is, the Bible records that people saw him. He went in that upper room afterwards twice. And there, the second time, Philip, I mean, Thomas said to uh, Jesus, My Lord, my God, do you believe he's your Lord, your God? All right? Because when we look at beliefs, there's all kinds of beliefs out there. Some believe he was a good teacher. Excuse me. Some believe he's just a good man. Some don't even believe in him at all. Mm. So we got to get the foundation of the belief of who he is and what he is. Because Paul will warn the Corinthian church later, he says, there's another Jesus. And as born-again Christians that are studying the Bible and loving the Bible, and devouring the Bible as our daily food, hopefully, when we're dealing with lost people, we have to find out, what Jesus do you believe? Is there a possibility, and I'm not judging, but is there a possibility that you have been deceived to believe in a Jesus that's not biblical? Mm. There are a dime a dozen plus shipping and handling. Now, I am against the Catholic Church. But there can be a Catholic sitting in that pew in that church who believes in the virgin birth, believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, believes that he's able to save, believes that he's the only one that can, between him and God, Amen. sit in that church day after day after day and be just as much saved as I am. But then the question is, okay, well, I believe Mary can intercede between us. What's the scripture say? There's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Now you got you got to and see. We're almost like detectives. We got now. We got to look at your life when we're dealing with lost people or saved people. What is their belief? Because there are all kinds of beliefs out there. You know, we can go to the ice cream. I believe I'll have vanilla. And Trace will have strawberry, and Rachel will have what she believes. But you cannot have an assortment of Jesus and get to heaven. You've got to have that one. Jesus Amen. said, I am the way. The truth and the So there's got to be other ways. There, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. So there's got to be lies. And I am the life. John the Baptist says, He that has not the Son shall not see light. But the wrath of God abiding upon him and his soul forth. We cannot just say, okay, hi, right, how you doing? I'm a born again Christian. I'd like to tell you about Jesus Christ. Oh, I know Jesus. Okay, have a good day. We can't do that. And now when I get into public ministry, when somebody says, I'm okay, but I will attack that because the Bible says there is none good that doeth good. And if I can't have time to talk to you, let me give you a gospel track. Here, read it. And they take it. Or they say, hey, I pass these out. I, I get, then you get a little more assurance. Okay, this is who I'm dealing with. But we cannot just leave the person, if they're lost, thinking they're saved. That is a greater sin. That is worse than saying, here, just say this prayer. And they don't get saved. we got to make sure, as the book of Romans said, we look at the death, the resurrection, as in the gospel according to the scriptures. we got to be assured that when we go back to John chapter 1, in verse 12, and we're actually going to move out of this verse today. But as many as received Him, that's Christ. That's the Lamb of God. You must receive Him. God manifested in the flesh, born of a virgin, who suffered and died according to scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to scriptures. That's him. The him that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. As many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, who went all that, even to them that believe on his name. Now Acts 4.12. Acts 4.12. Now, when you get people you deal with, they will say Mary. They may say Michael the angel. They may say Bula. 
They may say yoga. They may say Darth Vader. Or the great spaghetti monster. <laughs> no, there's a great spaghetti god out there, believe yeah, it or not. Really? I'm he's got a foundation, he's got people worshiping. They might come up with any, any name, but look at here. Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other. That's what we're addressing, to salvation. For there's none other name under heaven given amongst men, whereby we must be saved. Now who is that name? Look at verse 10, same chapter. Be it known to you all and to all people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, death, death, see that? Whom God raised from the dead, resurrection. Even him does this man stand forth before, he, this is about the man that is now able to walk. Look at Peter. Early in the book of Acts, Peter is preaching the death, burial, resurrection, and that's the only name. Now you gotta get you got you gotta watch out because if you get people in Good Friday and Easter, they have a name. It's called Asterisk. Her name is also Estar, pronounced Easter. It's a goddess, not God. It's a woman, and she also has another alias name called Mary. I, I, I want to be clean as I can. Estar, Esther, Ishtar. Is a woman pictured with with statues? She's got many boobs, boobies. Like rows of them, like a dog. Oh. They can look like eggs or boobs. She has the milk of life, and they will take that statue and put it to Mary, breastfeeding God, and then say, "The mother of God," which is not true. It's true, but it's not true. We don't have to get in that. Mm -hmm. But it's the son that she gave birth to. That name, Jesus, Jehovah saves, is the name. Right. And notice how Peter, when he mentions the name, he did not forget the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if they come up with their Good Friday, if they come up with their Easter, you've got to correct them. And do it respectfully. Do it nicely. Understand to them that those holidays are Roman holidays. And they're fortified with not nutritious and vitamins. They're fortified with lies. As Ron is getting to see with these, these holidays, they're fortified with lies. The St. Patrick's Day is coming up. It's lies. Mm -hmm. The guy wasn't Irish. Green is the, is the color of the Catholic Church. How many Christians out there are going to go to church wear their green and the symbol of the Catholic Church and don't know nothing? The name, the belief we are have is to be of our heart of the Jesus Christ that is God, that is born of a virgin, that has suffered and died according to the script. Make sure you get that. Was buried and resurrected by God according to the scriptures. That's the salvation. That's what we're to believe. And that's when we close off John chapter 1 verse 12. Everything, all the family of God. You are not the family of God if you don't have Jesus who was virgin born. You can talk all you want. If your Jesus is not God, and this is the danger of Jehovah Witnesses. I know. If your Jesus is not God, you're not saved. It's plain, I'm sorry, but that's plain and simple. Right. And I witness the Jehovah Witnesses. They hate me. Because I will go up to them to say one verse. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. You get after that one, you show me the proof of that one, then we'll move on. And they don't believe that, and they'll tell you right to your face. What was that last verse in Acts that you said? Acts 4.12. No, there was one after that. Uh, 10. There's 10. It mentions Jesus. So, there... There are people out there right now who are going to die or, or have died and woke up in hell saying, well, didn't I believe? And I'm struggling right now with somebody. I don't know if it was saved. I'm going to say that. And it's, it's, it's hard because who deceived them? But please let us not deceive them. You may say, you may charge me guilt. Well, you know, that person ought to receive Christ when you're talking about Maybe I didn't feel strong enough.
But then again, if your heart cries out, you're saved. Now, I would tell people my date was April 21st, 1987. I may have been saved the Sunday before that because that Sunday when I left that church service, it was like, God, I need to do something. Amen. I am guilty what that man said. I don't know what to do. And Monday I called my grandma and said, i got to talk to somebody. Now, I may have been saved that Sunday into that Monday night and no one knew. My heart was crying out. And Saturday morning or afternoon, whatever it was, I forget what it was, maybe that's when my mouth said, okay, I will receive Christ. See, we, we get to saying as the Catholic Church, okay, I'm laying in the hospital bed, I won't receive Christ, and nothing's going to happen until that priest comes in. No. With the heart, man believes on the righteousness. When we give our dates, and Tracy can give her date, and I can give my date, you guys give your date. Amen. Look back and see when your heart cried out. That may have been your day for salvation. The days after, which me, will have been five days. That's when the heart, the heart said yes. Five days later, that's when the mouth said, okay, Jesus Christ. And then the next day, my mouth went out and went to the scene and hasn't shut up yet. Even when I went into despair and backslid against the Lord, I still preached and got gospel tracts out, trying to live against God. I could not shut up. Jeremiah says, I can't shut up. I'm going to shut up. Oh, God said. <laughs> the word is in my mouth as a fire. Yeah. That's another thing, too. If you can't shut up about Jesus, that's a great testimony you're saying. The Bible says in Romans 10, we didn't read it, but you should not be ashamed. Yeah. People who are ashamed say, well, I, I'm a... Mm -hmm. uh, you're defying the scriptures. I'm sorry. Scripture said you're going to want to speak up. Well, I can't do it. You'll find some way. You'll find some way. All right, John 1.13. Trying to get to one, can't get out of 12. <laughs> Which were born. So let's read verse 12 again. But as many as received him, to them, Christians, gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them, Christians, that believe on his name, which the Christians were born. Not of blood. Well, wait a minute. When I was born, and any child is born, you ask a mother who has given birth to the children, there is blood and gook. They call it afterbirth. Alright? It's disgusting, I'm told. So, which were born, we're talking about Christians, not of blood. And I had someone tell me the other day, or today, that you know they know somebody and they're saved in heaven because their mama got them saved. Being born of a woman and having that afterbirth is not going to save your soul. Mm -mm. Your grandmother. Your great-grandmother. Mama giving birth to you is not the means of salvation. It has to be the belief of Jesus Christ. And there's a lot of people who rely on mom. Or Mother Mary. I would assume that when Mary gave birth... There Born not of blood, even though I was born of blood, nor the will of the flesh. Salvation is not flesh. Let's all go to a movie. Let's go to a biblical dance. Let's go to a biblical. Let's go to a church party. Let's go bounce in the house for Jesus. That's all fleshy. Mm -hmm. I will sit down, and listen to a Bible preacher. I will sit down, and the guy opens a Bible and shows you. Ew, don't want that. Didn't we read in Romans 10, you'd have an open Bible? You're not to entertain the flesh with salvation. Nor the will of man. I love my dad. My, and, uh, the slight things he, uh, my dad to me, okay? I cannot will my father to be saved. He has to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. As much as you love your dear ones, loved That's ones, right. You can't do it. You cannot walk up to God and say, Oh God, I just love this. This is just such a darling. He's just so wonderful. You gotta let him into heaven. You know, Mary, you know, Jesus is so mean. Mary, will you go through the back door for us? And when I preached, I think it was Saturday, is if you disobeyed your parents, you are a sinner. That's it. 
I don't need to get in adultery and fornication and killing and murder. What about the fact is when you sat in that room and you got the spanking and you wish God would put all penalty and judgment upon your parents, you're never you're gonna leave it, you're never gonna come back. That mom is so terrible. That's a sin. Sinners don't go to heaven unless they're washed in the blood. Now, let's go over later to John chapter 3. Let's look at this birth. John 3, 3. And sometime we'll get to John chapter 3. It'd be great if we could... Right it'd be great if we could, you know, get people here, get a place. Because I would do is, I would go through the... I would go through John. If we were to start a church, I would just go right... Sunday morning, Sunday night, midweek, sir. I just go right through John. Cool. First by verse by verse. You know? And then we'll, when we're, if we finish John, we'll pick up another book. Or something. But John 3 3. Oh, 3 3. Uh, let's, let's go verse 1. John 3 1. There was a man of the Pharisees, and they're the up, the up, up, right? Strict. Named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, means master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Now see, that's all he believed. You're a teacher from God. We believe that. Didn't believe he was God. Though later, Nicodemus will get right. Or he's speaking on the council of the Pharisees. This is what the Pharisees believe. You're not God, but you're just a good teacher. You're going to die and go to hell. You've got to be God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest. Ooh, I've seen the miracle. Oh, look at the miracles. Look at the tongues. Look at the person rise from the grave. Look at all the things. Look at the healing. Look at the gout that came away when I pushed the button in my backside and all that. Those miracles are not going to save you. Only by the name and only by the testimony of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But hey, look, he knows he's a teacher in the miracles, except God be with him. Well, no. See, that's what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. It has to be God is you, and you are God. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, thee. Look, no, oh, how are you doing? Good afternoon. How's the kids? The guy comes up and says, Hi, Jesus, how are you doing? Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Kind of rude, Jesus, aren't you? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Ooh. So you're not going to heaven unless you're born again. And we got to be careful because when you're dealing with Catholics and you say, have you ever been born again? They'll say yes. Ask them to explain it. And they can. Ask a Catholic, say, have you ever received Christ? They'll say yes. When did you? At the Mass. I ate them and I drank them. No, wrong, wrong. That. That's the wrong receiving. Or their first communion. Or their first communion. Baptizing more as a baby. So now, now what we got to do is now we got to look at this birth. we got to explain this birth. And you can't just go on the street and say, Ye must be born again! And not explain it. And you don't have time on the street as people are walking back and forth with their groceries. So let's look at the explanation. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? <laughs> That's a good question. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, you must be born again. It was like Nicodemus like, I can go back to my mom? Impossible. And when you say, you must be born again, that's exactly what they're going to think. So let's look at the explanation. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, all right, there's the blood we read in John 1. You're sitting down, you're watching TV, reading a book, reading the Bible, something, whatever you're doing, you're going to make a bologna sandwich, your wife comes in the room and says, my water broke. Baby's coming. Inside that uterus, I mean, it's an anodic fluid, but they call it water. That's the baby in the water. So the first rec recommendation of Jesus, who's God, in order to be saved is you have to be a baby born of water. 
Dogs and cats don't get saved. Human beings. And of the Spirit. So, to be saved, you have to be born of a woman, and you've got to be born with the Spirit, capital S, for salvation. So the Spirit does not come when you are born. It's not automatic. So when people say, well, I was baptized as an infant, sorry, that water is not what we're talking about. The water we're talking about was your mother. You see where the Catholics got it wrong? You see where the, the, the water dogs get it wrong? The Church of Christ? That's not water as in, you know, city water or sea water or... That's your mother. You have to be born of a woman to be saved. And of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. My mom was a human. I am a human. Your children, you being human, are human. It is it. And that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, is Spirit. So there is another birth that a man needs to get to get salvation. He's already been born of his woman, uh, of his mother, of the flesh, of the water. He needs to be born of the Spirit, which he has not yet, to be saved, to, be salva to have salvation. And I say unto you, ye must be born again. The wind blows where it listens. We have no idea where this wind's coming from. And thou hearest the sound thereof. You can hear the sound in the tree. Hear it on the recording. But cannot tell whence it cometh. Whether it goes. So is everyone that is born in the Spirit. Okay? So, Louise, tell me, you're talking about this, this, this born again, talking about born in the Spirit. So explain it to me. But what did we read in John 1.12? What have we been doing? You must believe. That belief with your heart that Jesus Christ is God, that Jesus Christ is virgin born, that He died according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. When you receive and believe that, you are born with the Spirit. But didn't I say I could have been saved on Sunday instead of Saturday? Between Sunday and Saturday, what if I got saved? What happened to me that I could say in writing that the Spirit came in me? It doesn't mean it. It's the moment when you truly believe in the Lord. It's that moment when you truly believe. Drop the head. It's that moment when you truly believe. It's that moment when, when the Holy Spirit came into you. And He didn't drive up and you your heart. He didn't come in with mops and buckets, though he cleaned your heart. That new birth is something that I don't know what happened. I can tell you that I sat in my grandma's living room. Joe Casro opened the Bible with me. We read the scriptures. I, I acknowledged that I was a sinner, and because of my sins, I'm going to hell. I knelt down in my grandma's coffee table, got her mag, and I, I put my fingerprints on her coffee table. I asked Christ to receive my to receive my soul, to, to save me, to wash me from my sins, that I may go to heaven by Him only. I had said, Amen. I got up. I became, I became saved. Explain it. I just did. Explain the birth. Now don't go say I mumbled jumbled in tongues and I had this holy feeling of leprosy and candle power and, and trembling. That's not what he said. Jesus said, you don't even know how the Spirit came in you. Nicodemus answered said, how can these things be? Jesus answered said, art thou a master of Israel and thou knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak of that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our word. I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not. How shall ye believe if I tell you of heaven? And you know why Jesus didn't speak much about heaven? Even Paul said, man, the things that have come yet to me, we. So, John chapter 1, verse 13. 12 and 13 go together. It's what you've done and what you had to do, what happened. 
and verse 14. So verses 12 to 14, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the flesh, not of the blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word was made flesh. Oh boy, we got to stop there. That word goes back to verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, the Word was made flesh. That Word was born. As we were born. You know, Jesus, I've got such problems in my life. How can you relate to the problem? Look at the problems he had. The Bible says in Job, as a man is born, so the sparks fly up, upward. So was Jesus born. He spent the same nine months inside his mother's belly as we did. He came in this world and started screaming, just like we did. So, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke 1, 26. Luke 1, 26. And we're going to look at the Mary being conceived. And in the sixth month, month, the angel Gabriel, him and Michael are the only angels that are named, and Michael is the archangel mentioned. Gabriel is just given angel, that's all it said, was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, to a virgin, there she is, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph. Of the house of David, throne of David, reign of David, Judah, the tribe, and the virgin's name was Mary. Notice I didn't say virgin Mary. It said the virgin's name, Mary. And it, it's not a capital V either. She's not God. If she was God, it would be a capital V, as some hymnals put it. Some hymnals will put, when they sing about the virgin, put a capital V. Be careful. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. So he walks up to her and he says, Hey, how are you doing? God is with you. You're going to be highly favored. I'm an angel. He had no wings. <laughs> and when she saw him, 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 not him, him, she was troubled at his saying, Who are you? Not, uh, here's this guy with an angel. Says, you're a man. Respectfully, you're not supposed to be talking to me without my husband nearby. You know? And then, what do you mean I'm highly favored with God? What are you talking about? What's going on here? And the saying, And cast in her mind what manner of salutation. See, the salutation... This should be. Well, I have a favorite guy. I don't know. And the angel said, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. That's where the water would be. That's where the baby would be. And bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. So Jesus is one of them that are pre-named before he's even born. Jesus means Jehovah saves. He shall be great. Not her, he shall be great. He's great in my life. And shall be called the Son, capital S, of the highest, capital H, God. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of David, uh, the throne of his father David. So here's a king of the Jews of Nazareth. Exactly what Pilate put on that title above his head. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Pilate had 
Pilate's one of those men, I don't know if he died saved or not, but just by his actions. And then the love for the people, I don't know. But he knew something. Because that inscription that went on the cross is exactly what the angel told Mary. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. That's prophecy. That didn't happen yet. And his, and his kingdom shall be no end. Amen. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. Uh, Joseph and I were just engaged. There has been no relations. And I have not been with any other man. She's confirming her virginity. And the angel answered, and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, look at that, the Holy Ghost, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest God shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing, that which is going to be in the womb, the Holy Spirit calls it a thing. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know that the life in the womb of Jesus the Bible called it a thing. It's interesting. Which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. God is going to manifest and shadow you. He's not going to have any relations with you. But by the power of the Holy Ghost was, the, was Mary the Virgin conceived of Jesus Christ in that womb. No man. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. And watch. And, and for God, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. The virgin birth, no problem. Really? Even if you have a test tube child, you've got to have a male and you've got to have a female. God says, don't need the male. That's the virgin birth. So, and what we did see in verse number 36... Back to Thursday. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her own age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. She was unable to have a child. John the Baptist, who is cousins with Jesus, is six months older than Jesus. A little interesting information there. They're cousins. So, Matthew chapter 1, about the birth of Jesus. We have to believe this, you know, to be saved. How did Mary get impregnated without a man? I got, the, I got a two-word question to answer for you. Ready? Holy Ghost. Amen. But how did it happen? I got a two-word question answer for you. Holy Ghost. All, all God has to do is speak and happen. That's right. He's the creator that, of life. And Amen. remember what I said, we can't explain how the Holy Ghost came into us. We can't explain how the Holy Ghost got married. Isn't that interesting? And we're both dealing with what? We're dealing with a birth. You must be born again. So Matthew 1.18. Now the birth of Jesus. Okay, so we're going to look at the birth of Jesus now. Nine months later. That the Holy Spirit came upon Mary. This is the virgin birth. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. This is how it happened. Here's your wisdom. This is what we can know. By what's recorded in Scripture. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together. No marital relations. That backs up what we just read in Luke. She was found with child. Of the Holy Ghost. That goes right back to Luke. Not Joseph, not no other man. The Holy Ghost had her with child. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, couldn't get rid of her. I mean, she's been cheating on me. So he thinks. I mean, wouldn't you, if your wife is now pregnant and you had no relations, uh, make her, was mine to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared on him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, Mary, thy wife, 
For that which is conceived in her is the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. He didn't say Mary you're going to, Mary's going to save the sins. Jesus. He said Jesus. There is no other name given amongst men whereby they must be saved. That name is Jesus Christ. You know who that angel of the Lord is? I, I, I gave Ron the thing. You know who that angel of the Lord is? That's Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. That's right. The baby that's in the womb shows up to Joseph as an angel and said, Hi, I'm in that womb. I'm in that womb because of the Holy Ghost. Don't you worry. She's been faithful to you. You're going to call me Jesus when I'm born. And I'm going to save people from their sins. And we saw Peter preach the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died. He hasn't even been born yet. But if he did not, it says, he shall save their people. He's going to be born. But if he did not die, he did not get buried, he did not arise from that grave. He could have been born all the times he wanted. He still wouldn't be able to save you. And what we're going to do, well, at least we've got time. All right. So there's that. Isaiah. Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Get some more verses here, we'll close. Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. We'll look at that virgin birth. So we're looking at birth today, and the new birth, and the virgin birth. Now, I would say to you, scholars do not believe in the, in the story of Jonah. They say it's a story. It's a tale. I read the other, uh, well, last week, I read something about, the, they don't even believe David. So, if they don't believe Jonah, there are some people who don't believe what we're studying today, and we're receiving it. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Amen. Unto us a son is given. Alright, so that child has got to be a son, not a daughter. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, capital W. Counselor, capital C. Amen. All right, give this, to the, give this to the Jehovah Witness. The Mighty God, capital G. That child that's given Jesus is, a might, is the Mighty God. Ready? The Everlasting Father, capital F. The Prince of Peace. That's Jesus. God manifests in the flesh. Isaiah tells us, hey, that baby is God. That child is God. Isaiah 7.14. Isaiah 7.14. Isaiah 7.14. Now, Corinthians said Jews require a sign. That's for Jewish people to, to want a sign. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign for Jewish people. What's the sign? Behold, a virgin, small b, shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. There's Jesus. There he is. And read verses 15 16. It talks about him and the prophecy. The prophecy that he would die, he would be buried, and rose again. In Job 10, Job 10, the book of Job, verse, chapter 10. Job chapter 10, verse 4. And what we're doing is we're just looking at the birth and the prophecy. Jesus Christ did not happen by accident. I mean, they talk about, there's an organization called Planned Parenthood that, you know, what they do, what they do. But do you realize the, the prophecies would be had for a for a virgin woman and her spouse husband that had been prophesied before it happened? 
That was planned. <laughs> Mary and Joseph, though not named, were a planned parent of God for the child Jesus that would grow up. So we've been looking at the prophecies in Job 10, verse 4. Job's asking a question. Has no eyes of flesh? He's talking to God. Or seest thou as a man seeth? Are thy days as the days of men? Are thy years as man's days? Job, if you were to put the Bible books in order by how they are written, Job would be the first book. And Job says to God, God, yes, Job, do you have eyes like I have? God, are you suffering like I'm suffering? And approximately around 3 or 2 B.C., the answer to Job would be yes. I was born of a virgin. I lived 33 and a half years. Mm -hmm. My eyes got sleepy. Mm -hmm. I got tired. I got angry. I got hungry. I got thirsty. I got disrespected. I got rejected. I got pain. I saw a, a dead of a, a. I saw the dead of a loved one, and I wept. And I was rejected of my people, and I suffered and died on the cross. Yes, Job. I can say yes. John chapter one. John chapter one. Verse 14. And we'll probably go back to verse 13 afterward. But John 1 14, and the word was made flesh. Not only was it made flesh, but it was prophesied. And again, you run back to John 1 1. God manifested in the flesh, Job. Now, what we just did with the birth, being born of a woman, the new birth, and the prophecy and the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, if you do not believe that, or you know somebody who says they're saved and do not believe that, they're not saved. But, when we're dealing with the person's soul, we, we talked about the death, burial, and resurrection. That's the gospel. That's what we're to tell them about when we're witnessing. And then mention the fact is, hey, you know that when the birth of Jesus was, was, was on this wise, you know Jesus was born of a virgin. Many people do know that. But the new birth, the birth of Christ, and the birth of being of a mother, we looked at today the salvation wise of all those things. You're, just because you were born doesn't mean you're saved. Just because you gave your mother gave birth to you doesn't mean you're saved. All right, you believe in Jesus. Okay, that's fine. Do you believe in the proper Jesus? And do you realize once you believe in Jesus, what we you get a new birth. What is that? It's hard to explain. But you are now, if you receive Christ as your Savior, you are now born again. In other words, you've been born of a woman. Okay, great God, glory to God. Now you've been, God has given you a life that as such he gave Jesus. There was no intimacy of our second birth. There was no fleshiness. We didn't get a tootsie roll when we got saved. And then when we look at the birth of Jesus Christ, it's like, <laughs> how on earth did that happen? How on earth did I get, did I get the new birth? I can't explain both of them. So how's that? Oh. Lord God the Father, just thank you that you were born 
And not only were you born, but you died. And you arose from that grave knowing full work. Lord God, you knew before you were in the womb of Mary. You knew when you were going to die. You knew how you were going to die. And you knew you were going to go into hell for us. And yet you went. And you suffered. And you died according to all the scriptures. And you were buried. And from being buried, you arose out of that grave three days and three nights by the power of God. Thank you, Lord God, for saving our souls. Thank you, Lord God, for the new birth. Just thank you, Lord God. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen.